Good morning, good afternoon and good evening everyone. In today's session, we'll look into Azure Monitor Activity Log to keep a track of changes made to our Azure resources. So let's get started. Like always, if you're liking these sessions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content. Recently, I was dealing with a customer situation in which somebody who had access to Azure subscription went ahead and made changes to the resources. And for some of the resources, they also went ahead and deleted them. And to make things worse, this went unnoticed for a period of time. That's why it's very important that only relevant people, they have access to the Azure subscription and the resources underneath. But what happens when these people itself who have access to the Azure subscription go ahead and delete these resources? You should be able to track the activities of these people. And also, if you add the legalities to entire this conversation, Things can go really south if you don't have the procedures in place to keep a track of these activities and generate logs. That is where Azure Monitor Activity Log will come into play. Let me show you on the Azure portal where you can go and configure this and what options you have by default. All right, so I'm logged into the Azure portal with my owner credentials. Let's go to the monitoring. And from the left plate, if I go to the activity logs, by default, this is the view I get. As I mentioned, in Azure monitoring, your logs will be kept for the last 90 days. Now, what happens because of the compliance reason, you want to keep the data for more than 90 days. That's where exporting activity logs or integrating that with workspace or even with a storage account will come into play. Now, in this view, you can see I get information about the operation name, the status, the time, the timestamp, and under which subscription this activity took place and who actually initiated this event. Optionally, if I want, I can add more column to this information. I can also have column for event category, resource group, resource type, and event resource. But let's stick to the default that we have. I can also download a CSV file. If I want, I can get insights of each activity, but for that, I need to integrate that with the workspace. But let's do it this way. Let's go and export this data to an activity log. And uh, here you can add the diagnostic settings. And based on the logs that you want to ingest into the destination, you can pick from administrative, security, service health. You can also have logs for the alerts, recommendation, policy, auto scale, and resource health. Let's pick some of the logs here. And you can send this to a destination like a workspace. So here you can run custom query against these activities and then you can get relevant information based on your needs. You can also archive the data to a storage account or even you can integrate that to uh, event hub or even to send this to a partner solution. So all these options are available for you, right? Uh, but let me show you because I already created one diagnostic settings and uh, let me just show you where I'm sending these logs to. So name of my diagnostic setting is ITS demo and I'm sending these logs to a workspace and also to a storage account. If I want, I can go and edit the settings and the name of my workspace is loss 10 and I'm also archiving this to a storage account with the name my storage 1089. And the reason I'm sending this to both workspace and the storage account, let me show you why. If I go under the log native workspace, and one reason obviously is that I want to run custom query against these activity. If I go and uh, under settings, go to the usage and estimated cost. If I go under the data retention, the maximum amount of uh, uh, data retention in terms of days I can keep is 730 days, which is basically for two years. And what happens if I want to keep the data even more than that, that's where ingesting of that data into a storage account will come into play and also it's much more cheaper as compared to the workspace but uh, let me show you once you do that what you can do with that uh, uh, data so let me go back to the monitor now if 
from the left side I can go to the locks. Let me close this and I can run custom query. For example, let me just show you. I can view the count of activity log records for each category by using just the simple query. Let me go and input this. And let me run this. And you can see that under the results, I have category value, which is administrative, and there are 36 counts for that. If I want, I can look this in the chart format too. Now I can run another query if I just want to get the retrieve the logs just for the administrative category. For that, I can run this custom query. And you can see all this information I got for the last 24 hours. I can always tweak this right as per my requirement. But that's the power of uh, integrating that with a, a workspace. I can go and uh, expand each of this category to get more information. So this is really handy if I'm trying to troubleshoot. Also, let me look at in the storage account what activity I have. So I'm going to search for it. And name of my storage account was my storage 1089. And the first time you're configuring this, it might take some time depending upon the logs and the activity which has happened. But once it is there, I can go under the data storage and go to the container and it will create basically a container with the name inside activity logs. Now, if I go and expand this, you will have a folder uh, with the name resource ID. You can go to the subscription with the ID. Now y is equal to 2023, so basically this is the year it is mentioning. M is equal to 10, this specifies the month. D is equal to 10 means it's the date, so it's 10th of October. And uh, this is the UTC time basically in digital format, H equal to 09, H equal to 19, H equal to 21. So every hour it will uh, send the data to the storage account. Let me just expand the latest one. M is equal to always zero because as he said, that data will be sent every hour. So let me go and expand this. And you will have a file with the format in the format of JSON. I can go and expand this. And if I want, I can also download this to get more information in this, right? So let me go and open it. And you can see the information. This is also critical, very similar to the way Obviously, we can run a query against in, in the storage account. But again, this is really important information about the location, what release version we are talking about, at what time uh, the timestamp is also there uh, during which the activity took place. And if I just move my cursor on the right side, it is giving me information about against what resource. So in this case, it was the Microsoft.compute. The activity took place, the operation, and the activity was start, right? And it was successful. Uh, we also get the information about the uh, uh, IP address from where it was uh, uh, generated with the subscription ID. So you can see this information can be critical. And as I again said that, if you have to provide this as a proof in case of legal case, uh, this, can, this can be uh, really handy when you're trying to uh, prove your case. But this is how you're going to use Azure Monitor and integrate this with Workspace as the storage account to keep the data more than the default, which is 90 days that you get within the Azure Monitor. Hopefully, you like this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.